Hey guys, MEP Guy here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this storm drain system inside of Revit extremely fast. Now, the reason we're able to do it so fast is we have some custom storm drain families that I've created, and also some custom tags, and everything gets calculated automatically inside of Revit. So I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know on how to do it really fast inside of Revit. But first, let me show you guys how these roof drains work. So I'm gonna zoom in over here, I'm gonna double click into this view. Now you can see the roof drain has this little box or rectangle around the roof drain. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help calculate the square foot for you. Now this square foot calculation gets converted to GPMs. So let me show you guys how that works. I'm gonna click on the roof drain family. You can see there's, there's these little grips right here. So I'm gonna move the grip way out here. And you can see my GPM and my square foot starts to increase. If I move it even further, way out here, now I'm up to 361 square foot and 13 GPM. So as I'm getting bigger with my square footage, my GPM is increasing, and that makes sense. Now, the way this calculates the GPM, it's based on the rainfall rate. So if we click on our storm drain, and I hit edit type, you can see there's a parameter value called storm rainfall rate. And that depends on your area, and you'll wanna look up in the uh, international plumbing code what the rainfall rate for your area is, and that's based on a 100 year storm. So in my area, it's 3.5 inches per hour based on a 100 year storm. So I'm gonna click OK, and that's basically how it works. Now, if I wanna override the square footage, I can do that. So if I click into the drain, and instead of saying 926, maybe I just wanna say 1000, I can also override this value. So there's a little parameter value right here called roof drain override i'm going to make that 1000 square feet and as you can see the tag updates because now this drain is 1000 square feet now these tags and roof drains contain shared parameters so that they can talk to each other so that's kind of how they work now another cool thing about this roof drain is as i increase my square footage my roof diameter also increases so if we instead change the roof drain diameter or square footage to maybe 2,000 square feet, you can see that the roof drain updated to a four inch roof drain. And that also updates this connector value to four inches. Now the last cool thing about these roof drains is the GPM actually gets transferred from the roof drain into the piping. So if I click on this piece of pipe and scroll down, you can see that there is in fact 72.7 or 73 GPM flowing through this pipe. So all of this stuff working together allows us to really quickly calculate our storm drain pipe size and also just helps calculate our storm drain systems in our building. So I'm gonna show you guys some examples of how these drains work. So I'm gonna deactivate this view and I've already created this view over here. Let me go ahead and undo all of these settings that I just messed with. So I've created this view over here specifically for copying and pasting this roof drain family and piping and tags into any of your projects. So I'm gonna just double click into them. And all you have to do is basically tab into all the piping and roof drain, and then just hold control and select any of the tags that you wanna use on your projects. So I'm gonna use those three tags and I'm also gonna use this roof drain but I also want this overflow drain too. And you can see that the system colors are a little different between I have the cyan color for the primary storm drain system. And then I have this red color for the overflow or secondary storm drain system. So I also want to bring in this roof drain or overflow drain as well. So I'm gonna tab into it and hold control. And these are all the items that I'm gonna bring into my project. Now I can copy it to the clipboard and we'll go into the project that we wanna paste it into go to a floor plan view and then we'll simply paste it to the project so I'm gonna to go to modify paste and we'll paste it up here just like that and now it's essentially inside of our project so I'm gonna go back to that 3d view and we're just gonna go over here I'm just gonna select all that stuff and we're gonna hit delete now that was all we had to do to get it inside of our project let's go back to that roof plan view and let's start placing some storm drains inside of our roof so I'm gonna go up to Systems, Plumbing Fixture, and we're gonna place this on the work plane, and I'm just going to go to the storm drain. So I'm gonna start typing in storm, oh, sorry, roof, and there's my roof drain. We're gonna start with the roof drain, RD-1. 
We're gonna place it on a work plane and I'm just gonna place it right here. That looks good. Now the next one I'm gonna place is my overflow drain. So I'm gonna hit the drop down here, select this overflow drain and we're gonna place that right here. And as you can see, we have both our roof drain and our overflow drain. Now let's go ahead and size the storm system. So I'm gonna click on this roof drain and essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag this up to the area of our roof, drag this over and drag this down just like that and we'll drag it across. And now you can see that we've essentially created this rectangle or square around the roof area that's associated with the storm drain. Now if we go over to the left part of our properties window, you can see that the roof drain area is getting calculated for us. It's 3,637, and that converts to a GPM of 132.2 GPM. Now remember, we have to go to edit type and modify the rainfall rate based on the region we're building this building. So mine's okay, I'm gonna click okay. And basically it's done all the work for you. Now, if you wanna update this square footage to maybe, we also have to account for the walls. So that's important. So let's go to the 3D view. And you can see that there's a little parapet walls right here. And these walls are about, I don't know, four feet. So we're gonna use a little technique that I like. And what I'm gonna do is in the international plumbing code, when you're sizing storm drain systems, you have to account for half the wall area. So we have all of this wall around this portion of our building right here, and it goes up to four feet. So all we have to do is extend our little area two feet above this. So let's just extend it to a right there. Now, if you wanna get perfect, you can use the align dimension. So if I go to annotate align dimension, I can annotate from this point to this point, just like that. And then what I can do is I can click on my storm drain family and I can just move this up until I get exactly two feet, just like that. And that looks great. Now I'm gonna just eyeball it for the rest. So I'm just gonna move this to about two feet. It doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe we'll move it a little more and we'll move this one down a little more as well. That's looking pretty good. So now I've essentially sized the storm drain for this portion of the roof. Now I don't need this little dimension anymore. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna click on my roof drain and you can see the roof drain area is 4,070. So I'm just going to round up to 4,100. So I'm gonna to go to my roof drain override and type in 4,100, hit enter. And you can see that the GPM for this is 149 GPM. So let's go ahead and tag our roof drain. So we'll go to annotate, tag by category, and we'll just tag our roof drain. But you'll notice that all the GPM stuff is not showing up, and that's because we're not using the correct roof drain or tag. So we're gonna click this tags button. We're gonna go down to plumbing fixtures, and let's make sure we use the roof drain tag display diameter that we brought into the project. We'll click okay. And now you can see the roof drains getting tagged correctly. So we'll just use this. We'll click here and click again. Now we don't need a leader tag, so I'm just gonna remove it by hitting this box right here. And essentially I've tagged my first roof drain. So that's looking really good. So we've already calculated the size of this portion of the roof. So we can use the same value for our overflow drain. So all we have to do is click into the overflow drain and then update it with 4100. So I'm gonna go over here to the roof drain override. We're gonna use 4100, hit enter. It automatically calculates the GPM and we are looking great. So now I'm gonna run some piping from my roof drain right here. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click on this pipe and you can see it automatically calculated based on this roof area that I need a six inch pipe. So I'm gonna click this button. Now what it's going to do is it's gonna draw the storm system on the cold water system and we're gonna change that. So I'm going to click down here and we're gonna start drawing some piping at negative three feet maybe. I'm gonna go 45 degrees right here and then we're gonna go 45 degrees or over here. We're gonna hit escape. I need to be able to see my pipe so I'm gonna change the view range. We'll just drop it down to negative five, negative five. Now I can, that I can see my piping, I'm gonna select one piece of pipe and I'm just going to change it from the cold water system to my MEP storm drain system. And you can see it shows up in this nice cyan color. I'm gonna change my level of detail to medium. Oops, fine. And now we can see things a little better. So that's looking really great. Now I can always modify my piping if I wanna bring it up a little bit, maybe something like this and bring it over. 
and that looks good. Let's do the same thing for the overflow drain system. I'm going to click the six inch create pipe button. We're gonna drop it down to negative three feet. I'm gonna go 45 degrees this way and over this way, just like that. I'll select one of the pieces of pipe and then I just have to change the system to the secondary storm drain system. Now you're welcome to change the names of these things if you don't use the same kinds of terms that I use, that's totally fine, they're completely customizable. All right, so let's move this little tag maybe over to here, that looks good. And then let's create a new tag for our overflow. So I'm gonna click this tag, right click, create similar, and we'll just click into this. Now I don't need a leader, so I'm gonna uncheck that and we'll tag it right there and then we'll move it off to the side, just like that. And we can use our arrow keys to nudge it and that looks great. So in this project, we could just essentially mirror both of these roof drains over in that way because we know that this area is the same as this area but i'm actually going to show you guys how to do it again so let's let's start from the beginning we're going to go to systems plumbing fixture and we're going to start with our roof drain i'm going to select it over here we're going to place it on a work plane and we're going to place our roof drain right here that looks great and then we're going to place our overflow drain so we're going to select that and place this right here now this time i want to show you guys um, tagging it first and then you're going to see how it updates so I'm gonna use this tag right here. I'm gonna create similar, and we're just gonna tag this roof drain and tag this overflow drain. We'll move these tags off to the side over here, just like this, and just like this. They kind of line up perfectly for us, so it's nice. And right now, they're starting out at three inch roof drains. Now, if we want to override the three inch, we can also do that. So if I wanna override the inches right here, you can see that I've also included this pipe diameter override. So if I wanna maybe override it to two inches for say, so I can type in two inches here and you can see that the roof drain will go ahead and update to a two inch roof drain. Now I don't like using two inch roof drains, but that's how you would do it. So I'm gonna undo that. And now let's go ahead and since we have the tags here, you can kind of see how this works in action. So I'm gonna click my roof drain and we're gonna size it up just like that. And we're just gonna to go to a point about right here we're gonna size this over just like that. You can see my, my square foot is increasing as I'm doing this. We'll go to this point right here. And then we'll also go to a point about right here. And as you can see, that tag is automatically size, sizing the area of the roof based on this rectangle that I drew. And you can see I drew it a little bigger. So it's calculating at 4,106 square feet. So if I wanna override that, all I have to do, let me move this tag out of the way. I'm gonna click my roof drain and we'll over it again to maybe 4,100. Now, sometimes it might be a good idea to kind of give yourself a safety factor inside of these drains. So maybe I wanna give myself a 10% safety factor. So I wanna add 400 to this drain. So all I have to do is click the roof drain, override it to 4,500, hit enter and you can see everything's looking great. Now I'd wanna override these to 4,100 or 4,500 as well. So we can do that, 4,500. And then I'll override this one to 4,500. And then this last one, let's do it again. Let's override it to 4,500. And we are essentially done sizing our storm system. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to create a riser diagram. And I'm gonna show you a couple techniques along the way. So let's go to our 3D view. And actually, you know what's something, we're not gonna usually show this piping below in our roof plan. So one thing I do need to show you guys is you can see that there's still this rectangle here. Now I don't want that to show up in my, in my plans. So all I have to do is select the rectangle and that's actually selecting the whole roof drain family. I'm gonna go up to edit type. And if I go down to the bottom, you can see the roof drain area visibility parameter. I'm gonna check that off and hit okay and you can see the rectangles are completely gone, they're hidden from your view, and so now everything's looking great. Now I don't need to see this piping because basically it's below the roof, so I'm gonna edit my view range and we're gonna go back to zero and zero here, and that's essentially what it would look like. Now we need to remove the rectangle from the overflow drains as well. We'll hit edit type, we'll go down to the bottom, uncheck it, and now that's gone. So everything's looking great, and this is kind of how I would like to display on my plans, and this is looking good. I'm going to go into my 3D view now, 
Now for this, I don't need to see my building, so I'm gonna to go to Visibility Graphics or VV, go to Revit Links, and then we're gonna uncheck the visibility of the building. And now we basically just have these roof drains and our pieces of pipe, so that's looking great. I'm gonna show you guys a couple tricks. Now one thing I'm noticing is I wanna be able to connect this roof drain to this piece of pipe automatically in this view. So here's how I would do it. I would delete this fitting right here, and then all I have to do is select this roof drain, click on my connect into button, select this piece of pipe, and it will automatically draw that pipe to this pipe. Now I can use my trim extend button right here and we'll click this pipe and this pipe. And I'm noticing that this fitting kind of messed up on me. And that's because these pieces of pipe are not using the right pipe type. Now, luckily for you guys, in this template file that's included with these storm drains, I've included this pipe type called MEP Storm PVC. And if you go to edit type and go to edit, I've included all of my custom fixture or my custom fittings in here and all the routing preferences that I think you guys are gonna wanna use for your projects. So I've automatically included all that in there. So once you copy and paste this pipe into your projects, you'll automatically have all the routing preferences. So if we go to the 3D view, all I have to do is select all of the pipe I drew, we'll click it, and we'll deselect the plumbing fixtures or the roof drains. And now that I only have the pipes and fittings selected, I can change the type right here. And instead of the PVC DWV, I'm gonna change it to this MEP Storm PVC. And you can see that it automatically fixes that crazy fitting that was going on. And this is the fitting that I wanna use. So this is looking great. So this is looking good. Now I might not want to do this 90 degree turn right here. I might want to also 45. So I'm going to delete this elbow right here. I'm going to drag my piping 45 degrees right there. And then we'll use the trim command up here. We'll trim this to here and that's looking great. Maybe we want to also include a clean out. So if I click this piece and I click this plus and then all I have to do is select this and we're going to cap the open end right here and it'll produce this little cap. I could make it a plug if I want. So I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna check this PVC plug. You can see this the little plug fitting shows up. So that's kind of like a clean out and this is looking great. Let's do the same thing for this drain too. So we're gonna kind of scroll over here. We'll do the same thing. We'll delete this fitting and then we'll select our overflow drain over here. We'll use the connect into command and we'll select our overflow drain and it automatically connects it. We'll use our trim extend command right here. Click this piece, click this piece. Again, we need to change our pipe pipe type. So I'm gonna control Z that, and I wanna show you guys how it would work if I just change this pipe type from the beginning. So I'm gonna undo this piece, undo this piece. And so I'm gonna change this pipe type. I'm gonna tab and we'll deselect this roof drain. Let's change the pipe type right here to the MEP storm. Nothing really happens and that's fine. But now you're gonna see when I delete this, click on this roof drain, use connect into, click that. And now when I trim this together, it should work. Look at that. It automatically creates this Y fitting that's working perfectly, no mess ups, no failures. So everything's working good. I'm gonna delete this fitting right here. Now you could also use a combo Y fitting. So if I hit this plus, I automatically have in my routing preferences this combo Y. And you could do the same thing here. You could click on this and cap the open end and then just change this. I have this right now as my MEP clean out fitting you could use, but if you wanna change it to like a cap or this plug, that's totally fine too. It kinda of looks nice. And that's essentially how you would do that. So this little riser diagram is looking pretty cool. Now I might wanna modify a couple things. One thing I notice is this piece over here is a little far, so maybe we might want to back this down, but I can't do it just like this. So let me show you guys some more tricks. I'm gonna click this top right here. And what I can do is in the top view, I can kind of move this piping back so it doesn't break this piping. So if I select these two pieces right here, and then I kind of move this at a 45 degree angle, just like this. It automatically moves my pipe correctly and it doesn't move my roof drain. So let's go back to the view right here. I think this view is looking pretty cool right here, but we basically have to find the right view for our orientation so that way our riser diagrams look nice. So I think this view looks pretty good right here. Now we also might want to, I like this view right here. 
but we also might want to bring this piping down below the ground. So I'm going to click on the pipe right here. I'm going to right click, draw a pipe. And I happen to know that the below the ground is at negative 23 feet. So I'm going to type that in and then I'm just going to go out this way a little bit, maybe to 10 feet. That looks good. Now I'm going to show you guys a little trick. So if I copy this pipe over here, and then what I would have to do is I have to align it to this view. So let's go to our first floor plan and I want to change the view range to unlimited. If I align that piece that I just created to this piece, just like this, and I go back to my 3D view, here's a little cool trick you can use. If I select both of these pieces of pipe, there's a routing solutions command up here. And if I click that, Revit will automatically create some routing solutions for me. And what's nice about this is I can kind of draw in 3D without having to connect these things together. So it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna just finish this off because this looks good. And you can also toggle through the different uh, choices it gives you. Usually the first one's always good. I'm gonna hit finish and you can see it automatically placed that pipe. Now I could do it another way. I'm gonna control Z. If I just start drawing my pipe down, maybe I drop it down to negative 10 feet and hit apply. Since this is also aligned with this piece, I can also use my trim command. So if I click this trim button up here, I can trim this to this, and that automatically does the same thing. Now, when I did that, you can see that the systems are not right. So I need to select this piece, make sure I put it on the primary or the MEP storm drain system, and now it's looking great. So we have this little riser diagram. I wanna go ahead and start tagging it. Let me show you guys a couple tricks. If I select all of the roof drains, so I'm just gonna hold control and select all of these roof drains right here, I can use my automatic tagging. So I'm gonna to go to annotate, tag all. And first we have to lock the view, so let's lock it. So we're gonna save orientation and lock view. We're gonna call this storm system isometric, hit okay. And then I'm gonna to go to tag all. Let me first right click and select previous. Oops. Now that I have everything selected, I'm going to go to annotate, tag all. We're going to tag all of the plumbing fixtures. We're going to use that tag we were using before. We're going to click OK. That's looking great. Now I'm going to move my overflow drain tags kind of over, maybe to something like this. Maybe we'll move our roof drain tags. So we'll hold control and we'll move them over something like this. Now, one thing I'm noticing is I might want to use some leader tags. So I'm going to use the leaders right here. And we're just going to move it over. Now, one thing is it doesn't have an arrow, so I need to update this type of tag. We're going to hit edit type, and we need to tell Revit what kind of leader we want to use. So I'm going to use this arrow filled 20 degrees. That looks good. And what we'll do is we'll kind of move this landing right there. We'll do the same thing over here. And if you want to point it right to the, the roof drain fixture, you need to change the type from attached end to free end. And then you can just point wherever you want. So let's do the same thing over here. We'll change it to free end, point wherever we want. That looks good. And now we could essentially move this tag over if we want. Let's do the same thing over here. Just kind of making it look nice and consistent. Let's do the same thing for these tags. We'll select both of them. We'll use the leader and then we'll drag it out. And maybe we'll go up here like this. I'm not really loving how this one looks. So I'm gonna move this maybe to here. And then we can move this leader right there and we have to change it to free end and point to this guy. And we can kind of adjust that to make it look nice. That looks good. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's move that, let's move it to free end. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll point to the roof drain a little better and just make it look consistent like that. That looks pretty good. So now I need to tag the pipes. So right here, you can see it's tagging both the roof drain and calling it a six inch overflow drain. And this is a six inch roof drain, but let's go ahead and tag the pipes as well. So we're gonna go to uh, tag by category and we're gonna select the correct tag because the tag right here is not the tag I wanna use. So I'm gonna click on this tags button. We're gonna go down to pipes. Instead of pipe size tag, I want to use the tag with GPM hit OK. And then I can just tag this guy right here, this guy right here. Maybe I'll tag this guy right here, this guy right here. And then for the last tags that I'm going to use is I'm going to use the tags that tell me the GPM and the square foot and the size of the pipe. So we're going to go to 
the tag again. But here, let me show you another little trick. I'm gonna go down to families. And if I know where my tags are located, so I'm gonna click the annotation symbols. I'm gonna click on this pipe tag GPM and square foot. And all I have to do is drag this tag into the view. So I'm gonna drag this little standard. And then that opens my tagging command and I can automatically use this tag. So I'm gonna click this one. Maybe we'll use the free end or leader and we'll use the free end. Maybe we'll start with this piece right here. Let's go to a point about right there to here. Let's do the same thing over here, making it look nice from here to here. And that looks great. So we've essentially finished our riser diagram. We've tagged all of our overflow and roof drain families. We've tagged our pipes. We've calculated the square footage of the roof drain that it's and converted everything to GPM. You can see Revit is automatically adding the GPM of these drains and these drains together to get us 327 GPM. Now the last thing we need to do though is size this piping. So what nice thing about Revit is Revit has some automatic sizing tools available. So if we tab into all of this pipe, just hit the tab command a couple times, and then we go to the duct pipe sizing tool, you can see that Revit has size based on the velocity. Now storm drain systems are sized to a max velocity of three feet per second. So we can change this to three feet per second, hit okay. And as you can see, it automatically calculates the size of the storm drain required. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is you can see that this storm drain got sized to five inches. Now that's not a very common size of storm or PVC piping. So we might wanna exclude five inches from this calculation. So how do we do that? If we go to manage, MEP settings, mechanical settings, you can see down here under pipe settings, there's the segments and sizes. If we go down to the polyvinyl chloride schedule 40, we can remove the five inch from used in size list and used in sizing. Hit okay. And now when we size, so let me go ahead and tab into all of my secondary storm drain piping. We we'll use the duct pipe sizing tool. We'll do the same thing and hit okay. And now you can see that it sized it per six inches. So what Revit is doing is it's eliminating the five inch pipe from being included in any calculations. So that's kind of nice. So let's redo that calculation on this one. Let's tab into everything. Let's say duct pipe sizing tool and we're gonna size it to three feet per second. We're gonna click okay. And as, would you look at that? It automatically brought it up to six inches. Now you'll always want to uh, verify that these sizes are consistent with your local plumbing codes. Revit's probably not perfect and you gotta also be aware that all of this stuff is smart. So it's based on everything being connected correctly. So if you have you know, broken connections or anything, you always wanna make sure that everything's been connected and you always wanna check your work anytime you're doing design. So let's go ahead and put both of these uh, drawings on a sheet to make it look nice. So now that I've cleaned these up a little bit, we've essentially sized the storm drain system for our building. We have this uh, little roof drain or roof view where it shows our roof drains and our overflow drains. It shows the size of the drains. It shows the GPM, the square foot, all the information most reviewers are gonna want on your drawings. And we also are showing a storm system isometric that shows both the overflow drains and the storm drain systems and it displays both the GPMs and square footages and also the pipe sizes that you're gonna be using and basically everything you're gonna to need to know. And the nice thing about these roof drains is they automatically calculate everything for you so you don't really need to think about anything. Now I'm back here at the roof drain project that is available at mepguy.com. If you decide to purchase these roof drains, they come with this project file which you can use to copy and paste into any one of your projects. A little bit different between these roof drains and these roof drains, I've basically shown everything for you guys and I've added some notes on how to use these roof drains. Essentially these ones right here, which are the ones on the top right here, are the ones with the shared parameters. And these roof drains down here do not contain any shared parameters. So if that's not something that you're interested in using the shared parameters, you can still use these roof drains. They work the same way. When you increase this, you can see that the GPM is increasing. So they do the same thing. The only difference is you're gonna have to input the square footages yourself. 
So you can input both a square foot. So if you want to make maybe a hundred square foot, you can input that value, but you just need to be consistent. You need to make sure that the amount you input here is the amount you override right here. So if I override this to 100 square feet, you can see that these tags will in fact right here update to 100 square foot. And then this roof drain is also at 100 square foot. And then I updated this tag to 100 square foot. The same thing goes with the GPM values. So if I change the GPM to this roof drain, let's make this GPM 200 GPM. You can see, oh, I did the wrong thing. Instead of the roof drain override, basically if we override this enough, let's maybe make it 2000 square feet. You can see that equates to 73 GPM. So that is right here. Then you'll just need to update this tag to 73 GPM and it's just text. So you can do it however you like, but this setup does not require any shared parameters. So it works very similar to these up here, but these are a little smarter and they just make, make your life a little easier with the tags. So all of this is included in my roof drain template file that you can get at mepguy.com. And I will also have some videos available. I'm probably going to make this an entire course on storm drain systems, and I'll probably go over everything in that course. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to go to mepguy.com to get your hands on these. And I hope that you learned something. And if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. It, uh, you know the drill, it helps the algorithms, but it really just helps me out to, sh to share this uh, video to the MEP community. And I will keep making these videos as long as you guys keep watching them. And thank you so much. See you guys later. Bye.